It's under uh, Matthew Pavlich's skin and gets all the goals. He's being picked up by Josh Bruce, who uh, is uh, clearly uh, far more inexperienced. Game underway. The Dockers kicking to the right of screen. Crowley wins the first right. possession. No whistle there. Monday at it, but we've got a secondary bounce straight away. Looked like a partial decapitation. He's a bit stiff there, Monday, not to get one early in the piece. Crowley trying to go to Scully. Scully trying to get to Hill. So there'll be a run around there until they settle themselves down the players. Stephen Hill being held, free kick. Stephen Hill hold. Haven't quite got that right. And there's the man, Crowley. So it's Green's the odd one out at the moment. He needs to watch the spread from Crowley. Told to go, inside 50 goes. First attack at the ball from Pavlich. Oh, it could be Pav's day. There have been a lot of people turned up here at Patterson Stadium. There's 25,000 people in already who have come here to expect a 50. big day out from Pav. And this will be number one on the board because he's got 50. It's a soda. One down, 12 to go. Well, it was a great mark. That's the bigger issue. I mean, Matthew Pavlich is just in magnificent form, which uh, today is fantastic, but uh, looking down the track, it's even more vital for the Docker. 40 seconds, and the Dockers have their first. And the countdown begins. 12 to go, Jono. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a free kick to Hill in the middle of the ground. And Crowley was involved in that as well, because Crowley's trying to get to Scully. Scully's trying to get to Hill, so there's a runaround going out there on out on the ground at the moment. And there's the big grab from Matthew Pavlich. And yeah, Phil Davis Wiley. had to do better there. Yeah, well, he's got... Davis is there, and Wiley was coming from behind as well. So they need to work that out, the defenders for the GWS. Perfect start for the skipper. And a perfect start for Ross Lyons team. Just his last, I'll well, say six weeks. Three, six, three, five, six, four. High tackle. High tackle. Again, Mundy. St Steve Clifton's just got to be a little bit careful. He's trying to uh, stop Mundy getting the footy, but you just can't put your arms around them. Again, the quick spread. Barlow gave it over to Hill. Pierce cuts in to take the mark. And this could be two for two for the Dockers. Could have been two for two for Matthew Pavlich as well because that's where the ball was going. But uh, you're entitled to jump in board, and this kid is a very talented player. Clancy Pierce kicked nine goals, one for the season, so accuracy has been on song. Runs to 45 metres out, kicks it pretty well. Clancy makes it 10 goals, one for the year, two quick ones for the Dockers. Well, it was a bullet pass from Stephen Hill, and it was going right into the hands of Matthew Pavlich. But uh, there's the free kick going to Mundy. Mundy gets the ball quickly out to uh, Stephen Hill. And this is just a little bit too easy now for the liking of the Docker Barlow, I should say, and then Hill. Look at that magnificent pass. It was going to Matthew Pavlich, lace out. And uh, he could well have had two in two minutes, Matthew Pavlich, but the Dockers have 12-0. to And Clancy Pierce was challenged at the start of the year with the slow starts of Mundy and Barlow in the midfield. He's really taken it up, got his tank going and uh, has made himself a goal kicker. Interesting, John, they're going man for man, the uh, GWS. They're not electing to put extra blokes into the fence. They're uh, having a crack nice and early, which is good to see. Yeah, why wouldn't you? You've got so many uh, young players out there. Just let them have a go. Big Giles, one of my favourite players in the competition. And that's going nowhere. Miles over the top of the tackle was hoping for a free kick, didn't get it. As we have a look around this stoppage here, I know I've mentioned it a few times with Crowley trying to get to Scully, but Toby Green needs to be smarter. Step out of this contest, make a Fremantle Docker player go to him. Yeah, get him accountable. A lot of players around the ball. Going to be hard to get it out of there for sure. Which will be part and parcel of the, the tactics coming in from Sheeds and uh, Mark Williams. I'll want to... Make this a nice old scrap. No they know that if they can break, they've got uh, talented players. They're uh, elite talent, just haven't got elite engines. Valentine already off the ground for a uh, quick spell. You're right, because coming out of the under-18 system, elite at that level is maybe a beat test of around 15, level 15, level 16, which is excellent. But that could be increased. If they're a level 15 to an 18 year old, that will go up to 16, 16 and a half by the time they're 22, 23. 16 and a half. 
Makes you tired thinking about it, Matthew. Oh, I can only count to 12. Anyway, we've got <laughs> another scrimmage again. On the ball. That's making genuine attempt. Holding the ball. And again, it's a docker free kick. And this time it goes to Spur, who just flips it out wide. The player running out there in Duffield. He's forced to go back, and McFarlane's got a bit of space here. He can take off. Or he draws the man and goes to Pierce. Straight up the middle. Runs his full measure. Like to see that. Run 15 metres. Kick cut off. Here's Frost for his first kick in AFL footy. Well, he just fumbled it. But he intercepted it nicely. Yeah. Read the play well. Not sure about that kick, but it got away. He might as well handball if you're going to kick it two metres. Yeah, Green got it to Trelaw. No one to kick to. He was hoping to get it to the boundary. Doesn't get there. McFarlane goes back. And he's got time. Big switch coming through the middle. Johnson. Hasn't Johnson uh, been in great form? Jack, have you got this bloke down as a potential for all Australians? It certainly has been in the calculations, Jared. The pleasing aspect about his game this year, it's been consistent. That's not the best kick, oh. but Ibbotson gets one high. It came from Thomas Bug. And just to add to that, that was the area of his game that he has improved on. That wasn't one of his better kicks, but uh, one of the criticisms was his kicking. Ibbotson, long balling. That's a good mark from Big Zach. Turns around, he's got Pavlich free, spots him out wide, a little bit long for him though, hands in the back, it doesn't matter, it's a very good mark to Barlow. Good confidence booster for Zach Clark, big mark, that's what he needs to do, launch himself at the contest, his form in the waffle hasn't been that great, whilst Lyon's given him an opportunity to shine today. Well, he certainly uh, stood out there, that was a magnificent one-grab mark, if he can replicate that, on a regular basis, he is going to become the A grader you suggested he could, Jacko. And it was a good one grab mark too from Barlow, wasn't it? Not known for his overhead big grabs. Not a, his best finish, though. No, he's had some real issues with his kicking this year. It's an issue that's going to dog him unless he gets it fixed. Seven goals, eight on the scoreboard for the season for uh, Barlow. He's looked power to kick in. Well, we've got a huddle going here. GWS are outnumber, trying out number the Dockers on the win. Well, that power goes the other way to where all the players did run to, Matty. And he kicks it 15 metres, very, very short and sharp, just into the pocket. So only one option for the Giants to go down the line. Not a lot of height there. Bradley, off a step, sends it back into the danger zone. Well done by Power. Switch coming here. Kick from... Frost, there's a free kick. Untidy there from Adam McPhee, a senior player. Maybe it's a professional free kick, I'm not sure, but... Power, his little chip kick short, was looking for Giles, Robin got in the way. Hill puts on some speed, drives it to Bradley, beautiful pick up by Kepler. Ballantyne, he's wrapped up by Palmer, his former teammate. And he'll get a ball up. Well, you want the ball in Luke Power's hands if you're a GWS player. Sorry, Jono. Didn't look to be a high tackle immediately. Was it the second man in? Well, whatever the result, he gets a nice easy shot at goal, and that's be disappointing Kevin Sheedy because that's just ill discipline. Here, Valentine. First tackle's okay. Didn't quite, can't see from that angle, but anyway, Valentine. For the third goal for the Dockers, 45 metres out, almost directly in front. Wants it to come back left to right, and it does. He's on the board as well. Well, right now it's the perfect scoreboard for the Fremantle Dockers, who are so desperate to build the percentage. Every other club has had a crack. There it is there, the knee on the yeah. head. Yeah. It was the second one. You're not allowed to use the head as a saddle. I think that's uh, one of the early rules that you do learn. But uh, no points against is the perfect way to elevate your percentage. You want to just keep that uh, column nice and round like it is at the moment. Goals to Pavlich, Pierce and Valentine. Zach Clark into the middle. It's an opportunity to uh, show us all of his wares. Bundy again. He's hunting the ball, isn't he? Headed in the Pavlich's direction, over the top it goes to Bradley, that's a pretty good snap. It's going to bounce, it's going to roll, Pav gets there, down for two for Pav, four for the Dockers. It's all going according to plan. 
He's a lot to work with Kepler Bradley so far, Jono. He's had a couple of opportunities to pick up the ball. There was one magnificent uh, ball at ankle level early. He got that, and then this one, nice little tap out and extraction from David Mundy. Already the strength difference is uh, quite significant in those uh, centre clearances. But have a look at this, just that's, round the top. That's good skill, isn't it? That is great skill and uh, great... It just hit the ball running and that hit it at 100 miles an hour. Ross Lyon to be wrapped with this start. Well, hit his knee. I, I, mean, I, was, I was just looking at the replay there. Did he get a boot down? She'll get leather on that. You never question the hour with Kepler. You just look at the result. No, with Pavel's just goal. Yeah, underneath the uh, knee. Underneath the shin. knee. And it's a GWS free kick and Falau takes it quickly. Infringement in the square and Miles drives it long. Now, first four eight forward for the Giants. It's Toby Green hooking it back. It's Wilson almost. Had a fair piece of it. McPhee to Barlow. Got a push up now. Try and lock this ball in here, the Giant. It's the one here. They need to hold up the mark here, protect the corridor, make Fremantle go down the line. Jack Clark has pushed deep into the forward line. Pierce, beautiful kick. Johnson has Robertson moving for him. There's Zach. Slides into it. Bruce over the top of him. Flipped it out the back. Coming past with Scully in the right place, place at the right time. Just lost their forward structure yeah. there. Three Giants, sorry, three Dockers just sitting back. But it happens so often here at Patterson Stadium that the forward structure, even the experienced teams, get lost with their forwards at this ground. So it is a big challenge. Israel onto the ground. And uh, he is currently running man to man with Jonathan Griffin so they're just giving him a job to do just run with him learn a little bit about it and uh, just I guess yeah you know, the, the angles to run on the zones to be in and the work rate the work rate that's not a good kick coming out but Barlow keeps it in not heading back, back with Spur but no it's Pierce here's Griffin and Falau coming it well to Boer clever handball to Walters Runs around it, wanted the free kick and won it. Against Frost, or Trelaw, I should say. Player down in the forward line as... Oh, good interception and free yeah, kick. Yeah, it was coming in the Pavlet's direction, but it was good uh, work. And that's our first gamer in uh, Kurt Ayler. Well, this young kid from New South Wales, who unfortunately did an ACL before he got going. And he's uh, come back, and hopefully he can build on this and have a great career. Hampton with the switch, and they've gone a long way back here, the Giants. Famous footy name is Aylott. It's a big uh, responsibility to carry. It is, isn't it? Not sure if their uh, progeny uh, extends into New South Wales, but uh, you never know. I wonder if they call him the Doctor. Well, Fremantle are number one in the competition from not allowing the opposition to play on from marks and that's going to be difficult for the GWS they need to try and get the ball moving as quickly as possible and that's one way you can keep a forward structure because the forwards when the players slow down so much the forwards get sucked up the ground and they can't get back came off the knee but did it get his boot on the way down must have I don't know if it did what did you think Jared need to see it again I was busy looking at Izzy as you do ball up high for the Dockers. Ballantyne goes back. Clark is there as well. Bug didn't have possession. Wins the free. And a 50. Didn't give it back quick enough. Bug and Ballantyne. I'm going to enjoy that yeah, contest. Yeah. Oh, oh, now he's just been knocked over, Ballantyne. Was he knocked over or did he faint? And now Buck goes down. He's already hit the deck twice today, Ballantyne. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Watch out, here's a free kick to Izzy. Wasn't much in it, but... Wasn't much, but it doesn't it. have to be. Yeah. Not happy. Oh, the local fans. Falau just going into the pocket. They don't have a lot of tall timber up there at the moment. Here's Giles, the only one. Kicks it out in front. Haynes is there, can't beat a couple. Again, a clean take from Bradley. That's three for three for him. By Hampton up against Subin. Subin did well. And you, can see a while. you can see just with that kick to the top of the square, they're going to be 
hampered because they haven't got their natural big forward structure down there. They haven't got Cameron, haven't got Patton. No, it just blokes you know how to play those positions. So there's an opportunity for uh, the youngsters. Big Sam Frost is down there, but he was more busy worrying about his opposition rather than going for the footy. So would you change it up, Jared, knowing that you haven't got those experienced players and instruct the guys to go for goal? Well, it's a fair point to uh, raise, Jack. I think under those circumstances, you, the answer would be yes. No point crossing it to the top of the square when there's no one there. Wilson with this kick. Giles the target. He was caught three deep. Spur, clean take, and got free well. Barlow went back into the traffic a little bit. Ibbotson, a bit sloppy there. Spur to recover. Subin does kick it well. Bradley the target. Found him easily. Open forward line. Power trying to get back to cover the hole, and he might get there in time, Power. He'll have the speed. Hoskin Elliott is trying to bring it back in. Not sure about that, but anyway. Uh, just take that one out, Matty, and then re reset. There's Power there, just taking Hill's run. Not a bad ploy. You don't want Hill to get past your no. goal side. He would have just said bye-bye. Giles knocked down, looking for Scully. First two, it is Hill. It's Toby Green. Good stories of the Giants this season. Toby Green certainly knows how to find the footy. On the wing is Israel Folau. Just for you, Jono. And she's just listening to you. He is. And here's McPhee, who pays no attention to that over the top of Mazungu. Power and Subin. Power got it, did well to get it back to Ward. Stolen by Mazungu, though. Took it out of his hands. He won a free kick for all that effort. Got to push down hard now. They've got Zach Clark, one in the, one out in the square. Pavlik's the target as well. Oh, Pav's thanks. got it. He's on song. We talked about it. We were being a little bit flippant at the start of the day. We were talking about 13 goals. He's lining up for his third. And we're just over halfway through the first quarter, Jared. Well, I'm not sure we were being that flippant, to be honest. Uh, oh, I had a touch of flippancy about it. But at this stage, we're three early ones and nine minutes to go in this term. He is on track. Pavlich for the fifth goal for the Dockers. Importantly for him, though, three goals for Pavlich. It's going to be a day out for him. Well, it's started extremely for the, well, Jared. Thank you. He started extremely well. Yes, he has. A really important is a learning uh, opportunity, obviously, for all of these Giants players. But you just notice the body use of Pavlich up against young Bruce. He just gets bodied out of the way way too easy. He's got to learn to find his feet, use his thighs, and know that the body work is coming. So he's up there looking for the mark. He's not going to take the mark. He's got to make sure Pav gets away from the ball. Percentage continues to build for the Dockers. Three goals to Pavlich has just put himself into third spot on the Coleman medal race. He's just jumped over Nick Revolt. And he's chasing Jack. The end of that list, his buddy is out. He is Griffin. Couldn't get free. Well, over the last five or six weeks of, of football, Matthew Pavlich does sit number one yeah, now. He does. For goals in the competition. Yep. Green, handball forward, past Wilson. Good hands. Yeah, good take by Frost. Gives it over to Ward. Just hooked the kick, but he gets the Giants on the board. I've admired Callum Ward's work this year. He's uh, really worked hard. Obviously, it's going to be difficult circumstances for the best part of two or three years for everybody at the Giants on the scoreboard. But the work rate, if the work rate stays at the level he is producing, they're going to have a magnificent leadership and role model, and the results will come. Well, I'm not sure whether he would have been included in the Bulldogs leadership group this year. So it just shows with the challenge thrown out to a young player like Callum Ward, they can respond in a positive way. Uh, crowd were hoping for a free kick for uh, in the back against Bug there. Knocked out by Giles. Green. A little bit of time to assess. Spirals it forward. Gets plenty on it. Haynes back. Got to be two. One of them, oh, Johnson. Slightly high. Slightly high. Short from Johnson to McFarlane. Watching Nick Haynes a couple of times now, he's, he's clearly been instructed 
to have a defensive role in some ways. But if the ball's there to be won, he's regarded as a really good mark. He's just got to go for it. Switch by the Dockers again. Johnson to McPhee. Next in line is probably Robinson. And that's where he heads, but it's got to be perfect because they're coming. Free kick. And it was two on one. So if they didn't give away a free kick there, the Giants, they are away with Miles, but now it's Robinson. Down the line he goes. Pavlich the target. Davis the spoil. Pierce. Frost. Nice work by Phil Davis there. Just really good use of the body. Unsuspects it. That's holding the ball. And that's unfair. That the ball is out. Steve Silvani, I think, would be having a significant influence on a lot of these young guys. It's a pretty handy assistant coach to have, to have up there, albeit uh, part-time doing a list management job. Long kick in. Is he on the spoil for Davis? Well, he's got his work cut out. Was this ball out? There you just see Davis. He That's bodied him up, the, up underneath the ball. That ball's he... out. The umpire couldn't see it, so fair enough. Matthew Pavlich being held. Matthew Pavlich. Matthew Pavlich being held. This is for four. We might have to reassess. <laughs> the crowd's happy with that. Big story already in the game. Not just the percentage for the Dockers. They're going to be out to a six-goal lead. How many can Pav get today? Can he match Buddy's 13? Fly Anthony Hudson in for the last couple of minutes. Well, if he's going to get that many, you just can't miss sodas like this. He's not going to at the moment, Jared. Four straight for the Pav. We've got a story building here, Jono, and it's a story that uh, has got a number 10, 12, 14 on the end of it. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but if you get four goals early in the piece and you know that the ball's going to continually come down there, you are in uh, for one hell of a big day. And Matthew Pavlich at this stage, he has got himself off to a great start. Well, I've just gone through the record books, guys, this early, and his uh, equal best before is nine goals with Paul Meadows, but the club record is ten goals, and that was a long time ago in 2000. Tony Modra. Modra. What a player. Play on. Play on. The highlight reel of Tony Modra is as good as anybody's. Oh. <laughs> and it goes for a long time. Kick clear by the Giants. Robinson did well. Crowley has support. Mazungo, quick give back to him. Didn't want it. Squeeze the kick oh. out. <laughs> just Things falls, on, your falls onto the chest of Pierce. He was just running along. Yeah. Minding his own business. Mazungu. Pav wants it deep. Can he get there in time? Push. Oh. Dropped it. The crowd are sensing it already, Jared. He had it in his hands, too. And he Green just went. dropped at his knees there pretty nicely. And uh, he has picked up a pretty smart free kick there, Toby Green. He's yeah. been watching a few players. Already uh, his seventh disposal. Buck down the line. Palmer's kick long. Wilson is going to be out man all day as far as height and body weight goes. Griffin back into the hole. That's a dangerous kick. Poor Chance kick. here for the Giants. Frost up. No one to kick to. He's going to have a shot from 70 metres out. It might even come back to him. Now it's a kick and chase here from Frost. Or it will it bounce? Oh, first back McFarlane. Oh, the party pooper McFarlane. Well, he hasn't read the script as far as percentage is concerned. Basic. Every point counts. Yep. Still mate, still mate. Johnson's kick over the top. You. Zungu. Fee. Ibbotson. Barlow. Who's next in line? He's got to jump at it. Had to beat two. They're already pretty conscious of him now down back. You see, Ballantyne went behind the contest. With two going up, he needs to continually come to the front, and he'll be able to cash in as well. Ibbotson to send it back in. Pav just get a bit deeper than he is playing at the present time. Nice push off and lead. Phil Davis is going to learn a big lesson today. And he's jumping for everything. I think Pav's got a sense of uh, what's going on as well. Off in midair, Robertson standing in the way, though is Trelaw, and he's a little chip back to power. 
safety kick from Trelaw. Well, both Davis and Pav have got their hands on their hips. You can see them there. Uh, you can see Pav now just also going back to the hands on the hips. They've been working flat out. Pav, as you said, he understands this could be a big afternoon. He's been working flat out. But as a, as a forward, Jerry, you love that when you've got your opponent with his hands on his knees, knees already. And they've gone inside forward 50, 13 times. Pav has been the target on six occasions in the yeah. first quarter. They're about to go inside again, I think, here, because they've got a good switch on. Although the kick from Johnson is just a metre over Duffield's head, but plenty of time to settle. Longer kick, looking for Spur. Good lead up from uh, Walters. Yeah, it was on it. Just present, just to break things up. Yeah. Create some space behind him as well. Now, maybe Clark has the option here, or Pierce. He's got a strong body. Spoilt down. Chance for Miles. Bruce by hand. Trelaw with a bit of time and space. Kicked off the instep, though. Wasn't a good kick. Hill couldn't take it. Recovers. Recovers well. Bradley with a shepherd after the give. Hooking back. Pat can't beat three there. Uh -huh. Three on now to have conscious of a minute on that occasion. Three on a one. They need to just be a little bit smarter going inside 50 and find other options. Jacko's right. They've got so many players fall to the ball. Normally it's the other way around for the Fremantle Dockers. They get everyone back and leave it open. At the moment, players are trying to get forward to the ball to get involved in the game. Yeah. Two and a half minutes remaining. 35 points is the margin. Miles down the line. Big Griffin at the back. He's always going to mark that. Any discussion about whether uh, Griffin has re-signed for the Dockers, Jacko? Not as yet, Jared, but uh, keeps taking marks like that. Uh, gets an opportunity to uh, extend his time here in Fremantle. Well, I don't think there's much doubt he'll be staying uh, or get an opportunity to stay at Freo. I'm just wondering whether or not there'll be half a dozen other clubs making more secretive journeys over to the West than uh, some others we've seen recently. Another good take by Kepler Bradley down low. Skills down below his knees have been excellent. Not so that but just to add to that, Jared, I think with uh, the big Sandylands out, it's an opportunity for um, big Jonathan Griffin to shine and just have the next six to seven weeks and show that he's worth to be a number one rockman in the competition. Yeah, it's a uh, really big time for him. But he's going to have some decisions to make at the end of the year, I suspect. That's a good take by uh, Will Hoskin Elliott. Gave it off to Wiley going past. And well read by Duffield. Frustration from Wilson as the switch is on again. Played this ground so well. And Mundy's worked very hard to get there. Barlow's running as well. They're building here, the Dockers. Mundy down the line. Was hoping for Clark. Walters can't keep it in. They can set up, though. They get a chance to set up, but their last three efforts going forward have all resulted in out on the fall, out of bounds, when they've been able to have been out in space and should be hitting the targets leading up towards them. Mundy couldn't take it. They pile in over the top. Clifton was there, but we'll have another ball up 50 metres out from the Dockers' goal. It's a, so far, it's a pretty comfortable afternoon for Ross Lyon and his team. Luke Power has dropped off the contest. Spare man in defence for the GWS. As expected, most of the disposals for the Giants are people down back like Power, who couldn't get a read on that one. Power, Trelaw, Bug, all getting position down back. And Power's the one that the Giants, they want the ball in his hand because when he does have it, it normally results in staying in the, in the hands of the GWS. Oscar Elliott couldn't take it. Mundy could. Here's Oscar Elliott again. It's a little bit round the corner on that. Miles couldn't take it out. It does go out. It's pushing the back, though. It'll be a free kick for the Giants. It's a great indicator of modern-day football that we've got one side who's kicked six goals, the other side hasn't kicked a goal, and yet the highest possession winners for the side that's kicked six goals are their full-back, and their centre half back. That's true. McFarlane and Johnson. Eight apiece. Yeah. Here's Power. Trying to share it around with Buck. He's caught. He's legged. 
Well, they've obviously discussed during the week that if we get the opportunity to get that ball in our hands, we'll just chip it around with each other a couple of times, play off from full back just to get some extra, extra possessions on the board. Well, that kick has really been set up for the spoil. Fremantle chance for a late goal. Griffin worked hard to get the ball out. Ballantyne's give just cut off. It comes to Miles again. He got it from Ward and he kicks it up high. Haynes caught behind. McFarland to bust through the pack. Couldn't get past Falau. McPhee trying to do likewise. Clean take by Hill. Crowley sending it forward. High ball in. Punch from Hoskin Elliott. How will it sit for Monday? Doesn't really matter because the siren has sounded. So in a quarter where Fremantle have dominated the inside 50s as expected, they have dominated on the scoreboard. So far, everything going according to plan for the Dockers and for Matthew Pavlich. Quarter time here at Patterson Stadium, 35 points is the margin.